Capitalist makers and art appreciators to the Art Space Podcast. Brought to you by Lemon Street Gallery and Art Space. Located at 4601 Sheridan Road. Stop on by your favorite citrus themed art gallery. I used to say a different mm-hmm. thing every time, but now I'm just going to do the same thing you know every what? time. It's not broken. Don't yeah. fix it. I need another catchphrase. So yeah. it's going to be stop on by your favorite citrus themed art gallery. Yes. Do that. And I am your host, Shelby Nesmith. And I'm Jake Hoy. And today we are going to be talking with the fantastic author, um, Anna Michelle. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hi. Thank you for joining us this morning. Yes. And I say morning because it is morning. This is, I believe, our first ever morning record. Yes. Or at least earliest ever record, yeah. I want to say. Yay. Yeah. I always like being the first. Yes. <laughs> you can hang your hat on that. Yes. we are. I'm the only one with coffee also. I'm, ooh, um, yep. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here, kind of. <laughs> Shelby's here. <laughs> so, but we're gonna record an episode. Yeah, we're gonna push on through. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so how are you on this lovely early morning on totally not Labor Day? Labor Day. Yeah. Oh, we're just gonna admit yeah, it. We, it's we, Labor Day. Yeah. <laughs> uh still a little waking up here. Well, night. Got out of bed less than an hour ago. <laughs> yeah. But you know. <laughs> We do the thing. Yeah, yeah, we do the thing. We talk about the art and the in the books. This, in is the, the, this is the grind yes. that everybody talks about. We're grinding. Ooh. <laughs> by talking, by chit chatting. But that's what the grind is. That's what it's about. Uh, Am I still talking? Yes. Wow. Too much coffee? <laughs> Maybe I should go easy. I would say you might want to slide that away from him just a little bit. <laughs> Uh, I said we're making up for the energy. <laughs> uh, it's the grind, and by grind I mean coffee beans. <laughs> got it. Okay, Still yes. got it. Oh goodness! Oh goodness! But um, so we can. Um, hey, in our let's de- talk about books. Yeah, yeah. In our delirious state, <laughs> let's let's talk about some books here. Anna, you have yes. been known to write a book from time to time. I, I am. Um, I think at this point in time i have four out i am working on number five Ooh. which is due to come out next month um october 21st nice. wow. is the release date um so that is in the editing process now mm-hmm. and wow. then i will be finishing up another rough draft for next year <laughs> wow. nice it's amazing to me just like writing a book at all it's like on a lot of people's bucket list i, I have to say like and you've done it four times over <laughs> soon to be five yes yeah. um and it, it is everyone will come up to you and be like oh i've always wanted to write a book or how how did you do it i sat at a computer and I wrote it. <laughs> I sat in a parking lot on my phone. Wow. I sat on my phone on my lunch break. I, I write wherever I am, especially because I'm never just sitting at home. I don't have that luxury. So it's I have an iPad that I can type on. I have my phone that I can mm-hmm. type on. Wherever I am, I have something that I can write with. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm doing. Just do it a lot. Yeah. I do. And everyone's like, I have to sit for an hour time. I'm like, listen, I am a mom. <laughs> I do not have the luxury of sitting for an hour uninterrupted. Yeah, you're moving. You're, you're, you're <laughs> I will write 10 minutes here and 10 minutes there. <laughs> and it works. You got these books to show for it. Yeah. It's funny to think all the different means we have to write now. Like, it's hard to picture like, Charles Dickens tapping at his iPhone in a (laughs) parking lot. Little iPad. It was the best of (laughs) days. No, no, it doesn't ring. Oh, wait, I got to go to uh, my appointment. (laughs) I'll I'll figure this out later. (laughs) Just in a little carriage somewhere, just going, yes. like horseback. (laughs) I actually had a joke with a friend of mine because I hate driving. Mm -hmm. So if I am not the only person in the car with the driver's license, I am in the passenger seat. Okay. (laughs) I told my friend because she was complaining about me not getting the next buck ready. I said, listen, you can come be my private driver and I will sit in the passenger seat and do writing while you drive me around everything. Oh, there you go. (laughs) Apparently that was not acceptable, probably because she lives several hours away. Uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah. I feel like I would get motion sickness. I kind of, if I'm like a passenger in a car looking at my phone, I get like motion sick. I get it really bad. Yeah. 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 And that's why I have to drive everywhere and Alex gets to be 
passenger princess and oh, just, just just the driving in general yeah yeah okay. i have to just drive everywhere so it's annoying but hey i'm i'm always the driver <laughs> like i don't know why i, I don't think it's because of motion sickness i think it's just because i usually it's, drive yeah, we'll just get to drive. <laughs> it's normally my vehicle going places mm -hmm. um but i am very rarely the driver but i grew up traveling mm -hmm. so since i was 14 i've been to most almost every state in the northeast wow nice well, awesome. like on vacation or like um, uh living or <laughs> so uh writing is not my only hobby um i grew up showing purebred cats oh Whoa. my goodness <laughs> so you're we going to cat shows and i grew up doing that i grew up traveling and I mean, a drive from here to Virginia, it takes forever, but you can get a lot done in that drive uh -huh. if you're not the one driving. True. Gotcha. True. Gotcha. That's your superpower. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. Um, I love the whole catch. Like, as in like a purebred cat. Yep. Okay. I didn't know if it was like dressing a cat up and... Doing a fashion show type I thing. I mean, we do do that sometimes, specifically <laughs> okay. around Halloween. Oh. Um, you well, know, you gotta. gotta have those costume contests. The <laughs> cats are never amused. No. Us humans, on the other hand, find it hilarious. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> well, awesome. I, I'm glad I've got that visual in my brain. <laughs> I never knew cat shows was a thing. but There is it... actually one next weekend in Racine. Oh. <laughs> Cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, uh, this may be coming out too late for that. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but good to know that there next is. Year. <laughs> there's another Catch one it. later in the year. I don't know yeah. when. Wow. Um, I have instead of filling my time up with cat shows, I have now filled it up with book related gigs. Yeah. Very good. So. <laughs> I it, I love finding out about subcultures that you like didn't know exist. Like, of course, the cat shows. There's dog shows. Why wouldn't there be cat, cat shows? shows? You know, yeah. like. Of course, why not? Oh, but <laughs> now that I have those wonderful visuals in my brain of dressing a cat up, I love. I that. love that. <laughs> that's a hundred percent where you went. Yeah, like you, you, you were first like cat show. They must be dressing up these yeah. cats. <laughs> it's fashionista cat show. There's no like... chance that it's just the dog show except their cats. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> but um, before we get into our questions, I kind of have a pre-question here. Um. So if you had to kind of summarize your um, writing genre, um, what would you kind of summarize that as? So I write mm -hmm. urban fantasy. Oh, nice. Um, so I like the fantasy aspect of, you know, the vampires and the witches and the shapeshifters. But I do not do world building. Oh, so okay. let me set them in modern times where I can go visit that city now. Or okay. send one of my friends to go visit that city now. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I do urban fantasy. Um, my biggest series, which is the Gemstone Witches, um, it is, I have the first two books out of 12. Okay. Wow. <laughs> um, but it will actually be part of a bigger group of books, which will be 48 books total. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and my goal for that, when I was planning this out, is that I had to visit all 48 continental states uh. <laughs> in these books so in the planning stages i literally put a map up on the wall and started <laughs> detailing where everything is <laughs> okay this book is with this state and everything like that oh my god yes um that weekend was hilarious i still wish i had pictures of it uh me and my best friend rented out a hotel room and we had a map on one wall. We had a timeline with note cards on another wall. We had the trifold board <laughs> set up around the room planning out the series. But, and just like, you can read the state. I was like, no, we cannot. We have 48 <laughs> books. We have to hit all 48 states. Mm -hmm. And as she does normally, she just shook her head at me <laughs> and said, all right. Well, I guess we're doing all 48 states. <laughs> and then we poured another glass of wine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, seems fitting. <laughs> well, as someone who's been to all 50 states, yes. I can say that's a really cool thing. And I didn't have to write a book in order to go to each state. So <laughs> like, <laughs> you're doing it way on hard mode. Yeah. <laughs> but see, now when I travel to a new state, I can say that it's a work trip. trip. That is Ooh. now a tax write off. Oh, yeah. Because it's for research purposes. Crack the code. Ooh, look at you. <laughs> 
Wow, wow. So far, you've done two of them. I did a little research. I didn't read your books. I'm sorry. But <laughs> I looked, have them at, on hand. looked yeah. at the covers, so I think I can guess which states you've done already. Ooh. I'm guessing the first one was Louisiana. That is partially correct. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to get into spoilers book too much. One is we start in Texas. Okay. So my main character is from a small town in Texas. Okay. And when the powers go out, she learns that she has to travel to Salem. Oh, okay. Massachusetts? Massachusetts. Okay. This is an 18-year-old girl who has never stepped foot off of her family's farm. Uh-huh. Oh. And she now has to travel to Massachusetts by herself. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> and then they find what they find in salem gotcha <laughs> we'll leave it vague go read um, it. <laughs> and they realize that well we can't rebuild here in salem our secret has been broken mm -hmm. and well where do you hide witches in modern times oh yeah new orleans, new orleans. Yeah. <laughs> so we sent them packing to new orleans so now Every book in the series begins and ends in New Orleans. Okay. But they do travel to all of the other states. Gotcha. So if there's 48 books for 48 states, does each one correspond to a state or is it? Kind of. Kind of. So okay. um, in book one, which has been out for two years, so if you haven't read it, spoiler alert, <laughs> they find out that they have to find 12 missing artifacts. Okay. Mm. So in the first 12 books of the 48, technically they visit 24 states. Okay. Because okay. you go back to the home state of each of the characters plus where the artifact is hidden. Mm. And yes, that does include here in Wisconsin. Ooh. Exciting. <laughs> well, awesome. But yeah, um, I'm, yeah, I'm really excited for the idea of an urban fantasy because normally when you say fantasy, you think of like, oh, like the the cliche, like Harry Potter and whatnot, and like the ye old times, yeah, like kind Lord of, of the Rings, yeah, yeah or like, yeah, oh, I'm gonna go fight some dragons or something. Sure. It's just like. Okay, but what if we did it now? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, and you know, when you do most fantasy writers, they're big into world building. Mm -hmm. They want to create these new worlds. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I want to see what trouble I can get my people into. Yeah. In a real world, well, real-ish world situation. <laughs> yes. And I eventually in the series, so most urban fantasy books that are out now, they fall into one of two categories. You either have the series where magic is hidden and the normal people don't know about it mm -hmm. or oh yeah we came out years ago oh yeah there was this big fallout but we're not really going to talk about the fallout uh gotcha spoiler alert <laughs> we see the fallout <laughs> okay <laughs> well awesome well yeah definitely go check those out um, yeah i am interested this has scratched my geography itch <laughs> yeah uh, <so>. <laughs> <laughs> yes traveling around so all right. Um, well, let, yeah. let's go back in time in your life and, <laughs> yes. and ask you what first got you into mm -hmm. to writing and what are some of your earliest memories about writing or literature? Well, so I grew up reading and I mean, even being read to before that, um, my entire life has been books. Well, in sixth grade, my mother said, we are not staying in the city anymore. Mm -hmm. And she packed us up and she moved us out to the county. So I went from a place where I could ha go to four or five different family members' houses on a bike ride to we are living on an acre and a half of land on a highway. Mm. Oh, yeah. The closest thing to you is the high school, and that is a mile away. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. So also, here are your siblings to babysit all summer. <laughs> How fun. <laughs> oh, <laughs> No, so thank you. I was like, I've read books. I have stories. I'm gonna write one. <laughs> yeah. Don't get me wrong. I'm glad I started when I did back in seventh grade. Uh -huh. What I will give you is a little bit of advice for every writer out there. Do not 
write a character based on your crush. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Because that is some Ooh. cringeworthy writing. And I have deleted this book okay. so many times, and somehow it keeps showing back up. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's in your cookies. Yeah. <laughs> like my, my uncle is a big IT person, and so he had one of my old laptops. He goes, hey, I was finally able to get all of your hard drive off of this. I was like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And I told him, he was like, this, this computer is from when I was like 20 why is the book from seventh grade on this <laughs> oh, my oh no yeah it's like it's not a diary so oh it was yeah, so like, like you read it i'm just like oh what was i thinking <laughs> oh. oh that was bad yeah, yeah. <laughs> oops well Bye. you gotta start somewhere yeah. well and i don't regret writing it um there was something i heard or read at some point believe it was Stephen King who said the first one million words you write don't count. Uh, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> gotcha. So I was like, okay, so it doesn't count. It's just start start smacking the to keyboard. read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, this doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, and that's, I've had people come up to me and they're like, I, I want to write, but I don't know how to get started. Mm-hmm. I said, listen, it's going to sound really weird, but write fan fiction. Oh, yeah, okay. as weird as it sounds. And there's a lot of reasons for this. Um, fan fiction readers are the harshest critics oh they you you spell a name wrong <laughs> you're gonna hear you will it. get a scathing review <laughs> but as a writer you have to have thick skin mm-hmm. especially if you want to go the traditional route you are going to get rejection upon rejection upon rejection if you can't handle that or if you can't handle the one star review you are inevitably going to have you're not going to make it as a writer. Mm-hmm. Start writing fan fiction. You're going to get used to those scathing reviews real quick. <laughs> gotcha. Well, Good that's a nice tip. tip. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just because people get so personally invested in these characters, like pre existing people. Oh, so yeah. it's just like, all right, well, I don't have to make up this person because they already exist. But what, what are you going to make fun of how I make them? say something or like they move to the room weirdly or something like jesus like yeah they will or well that's not canon like no sherlock (laughs) that's why i'm writing fan fiction (laughs) i didn't like what they did in the canon version yes you can go read that it still exists i didn't wipe it from existence (laughs) exactly (laughs) this it's the series and more (laughs) exactly or well you know they killed that character don't don't get me wrong i kill a lot of characters Mm -hmm. but i didn't want that character to die so i need to go back and fix that oh gotcha ah yes the wonderful world of 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 the the different genres and um fans (laughs) characters and yeah yeah so uh moving right along uh, with our next question here, um, who were some influences on your writing, um, or what is an influence? Your series, or um, so definitely all the books that I grew up reading. Um, and I know that it's a very controversial topic, but I will say Harry Potter was my entrance. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. The very first book I read by myself was the fourth book. My grandma had read the first three to me. The fourth book came out and I went, I want to know what happened. And she went, well, we're going out to a cookout. I'm not going to sit and read to you. Mm-hmm. Fine. I will sit in the corner and read to myself. <laughs> and that was the first book I ever read. From there, it spiraled. And I want to say my biggest impact right now is Laurel K. Hamilton. She is a huge author, but she is so niche that so many people don't know about her. Okay. Okay. Um, she writes the Anita Blake series. Mm -hmm. which is about vampires set in modern times in St. Louis. Oh, well, (laughs) that is. And she has a, pardon my French, (laughs) kick-ass female lead Mm -hmm. who does not take (laughs) it from anybody. Mm -hmm. She is going to rule her own world, (laughs) whether you like it or not. Mm-hmm. Even if she is only five foot four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fellow five foot four. Yeah. Are you five foot four? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so I mean she's just she really writes strong female characters. Mm-hmm. Most of the time she does make her female characters on the shorter side mm-hmm. and then surrounds them by all these six foot plus men. 
who like cower in fear as she walks by, which I think is great. Yes. That's <laughs> fan- more of that, please. Yes. Yeah. You know, the fact that she's a vampire hunter and a necromancer on top of it. What? Just icing on the cake. Mm-hmm. And the other thing is Laurel has gotten a lot of backlash mm-hmm. because of some of the things she did in the series. Because everyone's like, well, yeah, but your fr- your fan said that they didn't want that. She's like, but oh, these books weren't written for my fans. These books are my books. Mm-hmm. I wrote these for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And she did not let the public's opinions change how she wrote her books. Oh, good. And that's one thing that I've sworn to do from day one. These are my books. These are things that I've been working on for years just because you don't like them does not mean I have to change them. Oh, Absolutely. yeah. Well, awesome. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> oh, and I do want to say, as a six-foot-tall plus man, I do cower in fear pretty frequently, mm. uh, usually because there's like a wasp chasing me or something like that, but uh, <laughs> it happens. It's realistic, folks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I find the bigger they are, the bigger teddy bears they are. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I always joke, he's a big old polar bear. Polar bear. Yeah. Because he loves winter. So. I do love winter. Oh, no. Big old polar bear. I'm one of those. <laughs> I don't know if I can continue this. <laughs> oh, no. You outed me, Shelby. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Didn't mean to, but. Okay. Well, mm-hmm. we've got another question for you. Woohoo. So you already mentioned a little bit of this already, but who are some of your favorite authors? And that would include local authors as well, if you want to shout some out. Oh, but... There are so many, honestly. And I'm still working through my backlog of to be reds for, that I picked up at the Kenosha Book Festival mm-hmm. um, because there are just so many amazing local authors there. Um, I will say I have read The Mystic Music. By Caitlin Boyard was amazing. It is one of three. I am dying for the next two books. Um, T.R. Nichols has some amazing books that I just love. Um, Jesse Rose, I, there's just so many of them. I can't list them all. Mm-hmm. Go to the Kenosha Book Festival page <laughs> and just look at that list, and you've got a good props there um, for local authors. I was actually very surprised by how many writers we have here in Southeast Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Like everyone's just like, oh, you know, these amazing writers from here and here. I was like, we have so many in Wisconsin. I'm blaming the winter (laughs) because for anywhere between three and nine months out of the year, we can't leave our houses. So we write. (laughs) So we have to do something. And Mm -hmm. You know, writing is the politically correct thing to do that won't get us in trouble. <laughs> Usually. Yeah. Well, okay, I have gotten in trouble a couple times for the things I've written. The fanfics? <laughs> no. Uh, so I actually, I, I do not do what we call rapid release, which is releasing once a month. Mm-hmm. I have too much on my plate. I can't keep up with that. Some people do that? Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Um, That's madness. So there is actually a... I don't know the correct uh, term for this would be, but yeah. they tell you if you want to do rapid release, which this is very big for Amazon Unlimited people, uh, um, they tell you to release a book. A week later, you want to release another book. Two weeks after that, you're going to release another one. Three weeks after that, release another one, and then release one every four weeks from there. Oh, so it like kickstarts the yeah, cycle. and I'm just like absolutely not. Oh, God. I would lose my mind. I mean, I've gone 33 years without writing a book. How am I supposed to do it once a week? Well, and that's just it. Is I'm like, I, I don't get me wrong. I have a list a mile long of story ideas, mm-hmm. but I could not write a book a month. I give props to those who can. Mm-hmm. It is not me. Um, so I do once a year per series. Okay. With the gemstones being a little different, that is a book that comes out every 13 months because they come out on the month of their birthstone. Oh, there you go. Oh, perfect. <laughs> so, yes, it's every 13 months. But um, I was getting close to the release date of Long Live the King, which is book two in my Long Live the Monarchy series. And I was at the Kenosha Book Festival, and this little old lady, she, I swear she was barely looking over my table, no. comes up to me and goes, when's the next book coming out? <laughs> I was like, it'll be all next. It, 
it's done it, it's coming out next month it'll be here at the next canal shabuck festival she goes okay she goes if it's not i was gonna lock you in a room till they're finished oh no oh my goodness <laughs> and then she looked at the person next to me and looks at her dead in the eye and goes you need to watch this one she's real good at murder <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> well i mean again book one i think i did a total tally count i killed like 20 people okay <laughs> 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 so i mean i guess that had some merit but i was just like i i'm kind of afraid of this little old lady now <laughs> it's kind of flattering and kind of troubling I, at the told, same time threatening just <laughs> i've told some of my other writer friends that story and they're like you almost got mercyed <laughs> like apparently <laughs> Uh, demand over a book give me it i mean i feel that as a reader but like as a writer i was just like Gasp. i'm kind of terrified <laughs> but also elated at the same time right it's very much a mixed emotion <laughs> all righty well um uh any other um authors you want to shout out like bigger mm. Yeah, who are some of your favorite? Uh, um, definitely ones. the <laughs> ones that I really watch for are Laurel K. Um, I love Chloe Neal. She does the Chicagoland vampire books. Yes. It is definitely on my bucket list to make a list of the locations from that book and go visit them one weekend because yeah, that, that sounds just fun. sounds like fun. Um, what are some other ones? Uh, Patricia Briggs, her Mercy Thompson series our chef's kiss uh again strong female sassy lead i love the sarcasm (laughs) um i think that covers my major ones i'm really bad about bringing on new authors to my list Mm -hmm. because i'm that person when a new book comes out in a series i have to reread that entire series before that book comes out yeah i was like that too yeah (laughs) i've been told like you don't need just read the last i was like nope ocd is not gonna allow that i was from the very beginning i was heavily into harry potter like you uh, growing up and i would have to reread all of them whenever a new one came out so Mm -hmm. like the first couple books i've read like 10 times <laughs> and the, the last couple only once but. but you want to know what with harry potter that's not bad that's only up to six books you're rereading yeah. yeah laurel k is about to release book 30 oh, oh <laughs> um jd rep that's the other one i like um not urban fantasy but an amazing series jd rob is also nora roberts that woman puts out i think six or seven books a year Ooh. <laughs> every year including two in the in-depth series there are over 50 books there. <laughs> oh my goodness. I never read a book series that long, oh except maybe like Animorphs when I was a kid. But like, like it's if crazy. you like murder mysteries and futuristic, check them out. They are set, well, when she started writing them, they were set in the distant future. That's creeping up real quick here. <laughs> yeah. um, um, they are set in 2050. Oh, that is. It's not that distant anymore. <laughs> yeah. No, and I want to say the first book released in like the 1980s. Wow. So, like back then, that seemed like for ever (laughs) but yeah so i only list i only catch up on those like every two or three years i was about to say (laughs) because it takes me months to get through that entire series oh well that sounds like a um feat to accomplish every single time so but it's fun you know you like it you know it's not Mm -hmm. a chore yeah usually but. Yeah, I was about to say, how was summer uh, summer reading requirements for school for you? Was it was it fun? I, I won't lie, um, I never earned those three pieces because I sucked at filling out the paperwork. Oh, that okay. I'm too lazy to yeah. do it. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, like listen, I could have earned those, but I am not going to take time out of my reading to fill out your paperwork. Yeah. It ain't happening now had they had goodreads back then <laughs> yeah i won't lie i found goodreads last year i am loving it because i just go click a button i finished oh well, and yeah. it's done and it records it and it's great oh, well that's <laughs> cool it's kind of like um not like a letterbox but like um just like you're leaving a little just like i we did this book look at it yeah so what it is is um it's really cool because you can go on there and you at the beginning of the year you set your goal for how many books you want to read that year and then you can tell them which books you're currently reading and then as you finish you can update your progress if you want or i'm again i'm a lazy reader so i'm gonna wait till i'm done and then i just go click i finished oh and all of a sudden it adds it to my account so i don't have to be like i don't know how many books did i read this year let me just look at my goodreads app 
Oh, there you go. Well, awesome. I was going to say, I'm not familiar with that yet. I might have to check that out, but I am very familiar with the Book It stickers. <laughs> and I had so many personal pan pizzas from the Pizza Hut on Roosevelt Road yeah. growing <laughs> up because I guess I was okay at the paperwork. Hey, or my mom shout was. out to Pizza Hut for actually trying to get us to read. <laughs> yeah. No other food place has done that. Yeah, so it worked. Yeah. <laughs> Although most of my books were like Harry Potter and oh, yeah. Animorphs and stuff like that. <laughs> I won't lie. I was a horse girl. So I had like three horse series that I oh, read. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I got to the point where like I was reading one of those a day. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. they were like this big. Exactly, oh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, we're going to take a quick break and then we'll get back into more questions with Anna. Um, but right now we're going to get some words from our sponsor. Hello, Art Space Podcast fans. This is Joseph from Draw Joseph Studio. Most of you know who I am. I have this fabulous world-class draw studio up in Racine at the Racine Business Center, 1405. 16th Street. My studio is real easy to find. It's on the first floor on the east side, right inside the tunnel. If you know the Racine Business Center, it's a big, tall brick building, and there's a big Von Schrader on the east side of the building, and the tunnel's right underneath the Von. So come in the tunnel, first studio to your right, and on every Tuesday afternoon at 5.30, the gates open up, and at 6 p.m., I have a model posing. You're invited. It's free. Tip the model. Hope to see you there. We are back from that break. Hi, hello. Thanks for sticking with us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're still here with Anna. And um, so we're going to just jump right into the next question here. Um, so what is your motivation to create? <sighs> That's harder. Mm -hmm. um, I think I've just been doing it so long that I kind of forget what that motivation really is. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, now it's I want to get to the next book. Um, kind of like when you're reading, you just want to finish so you can get to the next book. Mm -hmm. um, I have such a backlog of ideas that now I just I want to get to those ideas. I want to see what happens. I do not have anything fully planned out. <laughs> <Okay>. um, <laughs> just going in. Yeah. So I surprise myself sometimes with what I do. I have like basic ideas. I know what my series are going to be about. But what is character A going to say to character B? Yeah, I have no idea. I okay. gotcha. kind of want to see how that turns out. And that's probably part, most of what I my motivation is, is I want to see what happens. And you know, like, as we talked about previously, I also don't want to get locked in a room by a little old lady. <laughs> yes. That's powerful. That, that's kind of motivating right there. <laughs> yeah. So like you have, you know, like the idea of like how long the series is going to be generally, you know, at least close to, but you, and you know, like what's where it's going to end probably. Yeah. But so like I have, or like, I know key points that are going to happen in certain books but I don't know how we're getting from A to B. Um, I do plot out my books, but normally I'm plotting out the book like right before I start writing it. Mm -hmm. So yes, Gemstone Witch is going to be 12 books long. I know what happens at the end. Mm -hmm. I know what happens about three quarters of the way in, mm -hmm. but I do not know what is going to be done in book five. Ah. <laughs> Have you ever changed your mind about a major plot point? Like when you got to it, like, Ooh, I was going to do this, but maybe now I should. Um, I, uh, yes, actually. Um, so this has happened a couple times. Um, one was in Long Live the Queen. Um, I knew how that book was going to end when I started it. Mm -hmm. Um, because I wanted it to be a mirror of how the book started. As I was writing it through, I went, well, maybe I don't do that. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> you know, I, I was getting, um, scolded shall we say by some of my beta readers and well, how could you do that and i was like well i mean i guess i could change it and then i was like no no i th this has to happen i said but you want to know what i'll make them all happy and i'll write a sequel okay oh there you go <laughs> so that was supposed to be a single book um it turned into a sequel and what I did, instead of having a prologue and epilogue that mirrored each other, the two prologues of the books are mirrors of each other. Mm. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So, but, and then in the one that I'm writing now, um, 
my characters don't always listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> I told her to stay away from him mm -hmm. until book four. She did not listen. <laughs> oh, gotcha. <laughs> so that every now and then something will change. Normally, I figure that out in the plotting portion of it, where I'll suddenly be like, "Ooh, maybe not." <laughs> um, but I'm pretty good about staying on track with my plots once I actually do the expanded plot of the book. Oh, cool! That is awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, next question. Oh, we're getting into the fun section here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so if time and money were no object, what's your dream project? I think I'm doing it. Um, the Gemstone Witch series was, it, it, it really kind of took on a life of its own. Um, again, I've been writing since seventh grade, but I always did shorter series. You know, I think my longest series when I first started to do all this that will never see the light of day <laughs> was going to be seven books long because again, hello, Harry Potter yeah. fan. <laughs> yeah. Of course it was going to be seven books long. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I saw a post on Facebook and it said, take your birthstone and the weather outside. And that's the title of your next book. Okay. I went, Ooh. And then I called my best friend. I said, we're going to come up with 12 book titles. <laughs> I was like, what are they about? I said, I have absolutely no idea. Mm -hmm. I said, but here's the premise of the titles. Mm -hmm. And again, as she is prone to do, she just shook her head at me. I could hear it over the phone. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we came up with these 12 book titles. So I have all, t all the titles done for that series. It took me about three years to figure out what I was going to do with that series. Mm -hmm. Um, it started off, I told myself that I was going to do a King Arthur retelling. And then I started researching and realized that I don't know an, as much about King Arthur as I thought I did. And again, I'm lazy. I hate research. <laughs> yeah, so. so I scrapped that idea real quick. <laughs> <laughs> and then I came up with this one. And as I was setting it up, I went, Okay, well, we have witches. What about vampires? Mm -hmm. I have the 12 birthstones. I have to do something with the zodiac signs. Yeah. And, okay, but then I found these other things while yeah. I was researching. And I want to do shifters now. Mm -hmm. And, well, I can't just do three things. And it 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 is kind of compounded. And it is kind of my big... My big dream series. Um, I do other things in between, but that is the big one that I am slowly but surely going to have everything done with that. Um, eventually, that series will have 48 books. Um, I am looking at doing 48 companion children's books for those. Okay. And eventually, uh, we are looking at also doing graphic novels to match each of the books oh, nice. so like that is my like that is my big one that is what everything is based around is that one series oh, well, awesome <laughs> okay i gotta ask you mentioned that the thing that kind of inspired it was the facebook post about your birthstone and mm -hmm. the weather outside mm -hmm. so the first book is called garnet fire was it like a firestorm outside when you were? <laughs> well, no. So what we did was that part um, got scrapped. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I took the we we listed out all the gemstones, um, and not all of them are the commonly known ones because as we were working through, you weren't there wasn't really anything catchy for those. Um, Topaz. Oh yeah, I was gonna say I don't. <laughs> That's even my birthstone. I, I think mine is garnet. Isn't that July? No, what garnet is, July? is garnet is January. Um, mm -hmm. July. Ruby. Ruby, I think. Yes, okay. I did keep ruby. I did not keep topaz. <laughs> yeah. What month is topaz? November. Okay, so. I was about to say, is there is a name? secondary one. Well, Most I, months do have secondary uh, gemstones. I didn't know this. Citrine. Oh, okay. Gotcha. That cool. I, I like that more than um, the topaz. lemon. Yes. Citrine. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's close. Citrine is like an orangish yellow. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah <laughs> take it. I'll take it. It um, almost has the word citrus. Yeah. So, yeah. like, <laughs> I got rid of the. There's one month that's a pearl. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, pearl that's not just even really doesn't a stone. work well. Yeah. So, like, we replaced that one. 
Um, but each thing, so like Garnet Fire is the first one. Amethyst Dawn mm -hmm. is the mm -hmm. second one. Third one, I have not released this title <laughs> yet. Is going to be Aquamarine Falls. Oh, oh no. We got a scoop. <laughs> yes. That is awesome. So each one, the other thing we did is because I really wanted to take this back to true Wiccan roots in these mm -hmm. books, I wanted to divide them evenly and use the four elements. Oh, okay. yeah. so i we that was the other thing we did is we tried to mix in things with the element the four elements three for each book title three times oh gotcha so that was another thing we kind of did um was figuring out how to evenly do those you know mm -hmm. so as you go through the series you'll see references to the sky or for air or water or earth and things like that oh well, cool very cool that is so fun <laughs> <laughs> aquamarine falls nice i don't think we've ever had a scoop before i, was about to say, I don't know if we've had a scoop before <laughs> I don't know. Well, but we do a now. <laughs> Hope you all were listening to the second half. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we're so happy that you're um, doing your dream project and everything because it's not everyone gets to do that. So It's my favorite answer to that yeah. question is I'm already doing it. It's like, oh, I mean, yay. I guess maybe the only add-on is turning it into like a TV series. There you oh. go. But not going to lie. I always thought I wanted myself turned into book my books into TV series and then I saw what they do to books. Yeah. When they do yeah. adaptations, and I'm a control freak, <laughs> that would not fly. That is not what they said. <laughs> <laughs> that is not what they look like. How dare you? <laughs> Learn from the fanfic stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a thing I saw. Shocking. We're going to go back to Facebook. Where it's like they need to create a new job within Hollywood, mm -hmm. and it's called the book reader. Mm. And oh. that's the person who reads the book that's being adapted. And every time the director tries to change them thing they hit him with the book, book. <laughs> that's not what happened yeah. it's like i want that job i need to read books and hit people with them <laughs> where do i sign up <laughs> i was the same way i would i was a huge harry potter fan and i hated the movies because mm -hmm. they were different and not exactly word for word the same that's not what they said because i was obsessed over it yeah. like i will say i think that's probably one of the better ones until you get to is. book four Book four should have been two movies. Yeah. I will die on that hill. All the last four of them should have been. But um, yeah, I was, and I'm the same way with Lord of the Rings. I was huge into Lord of the Rings. I was about to say, you, you were just like, it went over only the one book. Well, they my famously, my favorite character from Lord of the Rings isn't even in the movies. They, yeah, they no. cut him out completely. <laughs> and the true nerds at home know who I'm talking about. But um, but yeah, it's like, they. I used to I used to get so hung up on the the movie has to or the book or the show has to be exactly the same. It's just mm -hmm. an adaptation. But mm -hmm. now I realize I probably should just appreciate the artistry of the director. And, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. yes and no. I back. guess I am now to the point of as long as they don't massacre it the way they did yeah. Aragon. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was. Bad. I will accept it through gritted teeth yeah. <laughs> um my biggest complaint though when they do adaptations is not having the characters look right mm -hmm. yeah that's like it. harry potter perfect example really you couldn't give him green contacts yeah you're supposed to have green seriously <laughs> like how hard is that mm -hmm. or i've had them where they the character was supposed to be a bubbly blonde mm -hmm. and all of a sudden she's a person of color mm-hmm mm -hmm. There are people of color in the book. Choose one of them. Yeah. yeah. Why did you turn the bubbly blonde? <laughs> yeah. Like those are so easy to get right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I try to take that. Um, the, you're, you've got two artists that are meeting at this one thing, and it's just like, oh, they're gonna battle it out. <laughs> yeah, and that's why I started going. No, my stuff can never be made into movies because I will win that battle. Yeah. Yeah. That is the hill I will die on. <laughs> what if you're the one that's making the movie? Like you're the director. And oh, you're nobody on set. wants to work with me that closely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Because I'm trying to think, like, um, I feel like with Game of Thrones, like, George R. R. Martin was very involved with the writing mm -hmm. of the series, you know, and I, I think, well, that didn't end very well. Yeah, but, uh, I don't think that had a good track record. I mean, from my understanding, that's what is happening with the Outlander series, okay. not my genre, so I'm not really sure. Yeah. Um, my grandmother's obsessed, and she raves about it. 
so i mean i guess it can be done well i just don't have faith in our uh film industries <laughs> to touch my baby yeah. yeah gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> maybe cartoons we can maybe do cartoons An animated series yeah <laughs> Well, awesome. <laughs> uh, so our next question here is, um, what is the funniest comment or funniest story that you've heard about your writing other than a little old lady threatening you <laughs> at a book <laughs> festival? <laughs> So um, that probably has to go back to our beta reading okay. session. So Garnet Fire was completed during COVID. Um, and so right before the lockdown started, my aunt had come up from Kentucky mm -hmm. um, for my son's birthday because my son's birthday kicked off COVID. Um, um, literally the day after his birthday party, they shut everything down. Um, so my aunt and her kids were stuck at my grandmother's house. Mm -hmm. um, and so every Sunday, because I still had to work through COVID, um, every Sunday I would pick, do curbside pickup for Kringle from mm -hmm. ONH, and I would go to my grandmother's house, and we would do a live reading of Garnet Fire to beta read it. And we get all the way through, and on purpose, the ending of Garnet Fire is an emotional pull, okay. because the end of Garnet Fire was meant to kick off motivating all of the other characters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when the ending hit, my grand it was my grandma's turn to read, and as she's reading this out loud, she is sobbing. Oh, oh no. Wow. just completely sobbing ugly crying and all of a sudden i get hit <laughs> from the side of the head with i think it was like a stuffed bear <laughs> and my sister is glaring at me she goes you made grandma cry <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, that's the purpose. She refused to talk to me for two weeks. Oh, no. And I was like, what? She's like, you made grandma cry. I met it. It was like, I didn't do the book. Did it? Yeah. <laughs> um, another time, again, during that, um, there is a big battle in Garnet Fire. And my aunt was not able to picture this. So if you go on my Facebook dig in the archives there is a video of us in my grandmother's living room using my son's legos oh, and action figures to play out this battle as my aunt is reading it oh wow and we are literally using these to enter to show her what is happening so that way we could figure out how to write it better so it made more sense oh okay that's an inter interesting method there. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> so I think those are probably the two funniest ones that I have had. Yeah, definitely. That's a You're like Legos. blocking it out with, okay, mm -hmm. they're over here. How do they get over here? Oh, okay. Well, okay. well what if they do that? <laughs> yeah, it was it was quite amusing. And um, it was insisted by many there that day that we uh, posted on Facebook. Oh, okay. So that video is out there. <laughs> A well. choreographed writing of <laughs> of a battle. Yes. <laughs> awesome. True fans need to seek that out. Yes. Dig, dig through the archives for that. <laughs> uh, All right. Awesome. Well, we're on our last question. We're here. Holy moly, time has flown. Yes. Um, all right. Well, what do you what are some of your thoughts on the local author community? Or just art community overall, whatever you like. And mm -hmm. then ways to improve, needs, strengths, weaknesses. What do you think? So I will say, um, this past year, I have gotten a lot more involved in our local community here. Mm -hmm. um, and it is very surprising how welcoming the writing community is. Um, it's gotten to the point where it's something that I talk to when I have inspiring writers come up and talk to me at events is I always tell them, reach out to any, especially indie author. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like traditional authors, they want to be that way, but they have people telling them no. Mm. Um, you know, I remember doing a research paper and the traditional authors that I reached out to, I'm sorry, my publisher said I cannot talk to people about this. What? Or my agent has said I am not allowed to answer these questions about writing processes. And again, they're not really in charge of their own stuff. Mm -hmm. Indie authors are, and so we want to help. Um, 
there's very few times that you're going to ask an indie author or something and they're just gonna be like, oh, I can't tell you that. Mm-hmm. We're going to give you all the information we can. Yeah. yeah. Um, I had somebody once tell me, they're like, you go to an event that's nothing but other writers. Isn't that really competitive? I was like, no, we are not a competitive bunch. What I write and what she writes are totally different things. We do not have the same demographic. Mm-hmm. And even if we do, have you met a book lover? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who isn't going to buy both? Yeah. They want to read more books. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think that's the big thing um, with the writing community is we are here to help the next generation, mm-hmm. even though some of us are just starting. Um, and especially in Kenosha, I, I'm going to give a little shout out here to Donovan. He is amazing with helping people get started. He is all about the indie authors, all about the local authors. He organized the Kenosha Book Festival this year, which has been amazing. I do not know a single author who has done it, who has walked away not impressed with what they did that day. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I said, I did not realize that there were so many of us here. I think that would be the one thing that we could really improve on is better visualization of yeah. how many of us there are mm-hmm. because writing is such a solitary thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it is writing has one of the highest levels of mental illness mm-hmm. because so many of us are locked away writing. Mm-hmm. We don't go out. We don't socialize. We sit at our desks and we write. Mm -hmm. So what happens when you isolate yourself? Mm -hmm. The madness sets in. The madness (laughs) sets in. And don't get me wrong. It can bring on some great work. Look at Hemingway. Uh. (laughs) But at the same time, it's not healthy. Oh, yeah. Um, And that's one thing that I really do think we need to work on um, is getting together more. Even if we're not writing, you know, talking to each other. I have a small group of writer friends where I'll get an idea and I'll be like, it'll be one in the morning. I'm messaging them. Oh, my God. Guess what just happened? (laughs) And it's I've woken up to a couple of those messages, too. And it's great. That is the one thing we need to work on. There are so many of us out there. Mm -hmm. Now we just have to find each other. Yeah. Yeah. I want to say I kind of, unfortunately, before the book festival, didn't even realize there were local authors in Kenosha. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's not like I didn't think they existed. It was just I didn't realize they existed. Yeah. So having them gathered was like a good visual to set for. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just it, too. I mean, I grew up in Racine. Um, I've traveled outside of Racine to attempt to live several times, but I always get pulled back. And I have always thought, oh, my God, I'm a writer from Wisconsin. Nobody's going to want to read this. <laughs> you know, I'm a writer from Wisconsin. Nobody, half the people, I swear, don't even know where Wisconsin is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then you start seeing all of these other people and you're like, I'm not alone. Mm-hmm. There are so many other people out there. But because it's such a solitary thing. And I mean, with books, yeah, you can get in a bookstore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But most time you're not standing around that bookstore to sell your books. You're Mm -hmm. dropping your books off. You're going about your day. Mm -hmm. So there's really no interaction. So that's. Oh, well, thank you, Donovan. You provided that. (laughs) And it is. That is a big thing. Um, I mean, I've met so many cool people this summer just from doing that event Mm -hmm. that are other writers. And it is something that we've talked about now wanting to continue just getting together for, you know, coffee or, you know, just a quick, you know, hanging out thing. Throughout the winter months, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because otherwise you do, you sit down to write a book and you're locked in your house. Mm-hmm. Again, I've been writing since seventh grade and until this summer, I had never met another local author. Oh, wow. So <laughs> you, yeah. Thank you, Donovan. I yeah. keep saying thank you. And, but... the, and those at home that are mm-hmm. wishing, how do I get this? How do, how do I find out more? Well, September 24th is the next Kenosha Book Festival. It is. It, it is the last one for the year, yes. um, which is both sad and a little uh, relieving because <laughs> these are outdoor events mm-hmm. and us authors get cold. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the first one this season, I think, was really cold. Oh, it, it was freezing. <laughs> yeah. um, but you want to know what? I will give it out to all of the book lovers in Wisconsin that did not keep them away. No. Oh, good. <laughs> it was so busy that day. Like, and 
us authors, we had to have looked miserable out there. <laughs> in blankets. Like, we were in blankets. I think some people brought out their winter coats. We're all huddled in, just shivering. We mm-hmm. did not make good salespeople that day, mm-hmm. but the book lovers turned out. Aww. So I'll That's give it up great. to them. Well, hopefully they turn out again on September 24th yes. out by Studio Moonfall. Yeah. And I know um, Donovan, he does events throughout the year as well. Yes. Like author talks and just meet the authors. So definitely um, go say hi and go support Donovan as well. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> support. Uh, no matter where you are, find your local indie bookstore. Oh, Don't yeah. get me wrong. Much love to Barnes and Noble. I have spent tons of time there, more than I'm comfortable saying. But find your local stores, support mm-hmm. them, because they're the ones supporting your indie authors. Oh yeah. We got to shout out Blue House Books too, because there are other oh, local yes. bookstores. So shout out to yes. Blue House Books, Sam over there. Yeah, thank you. Um, and then if you're in the Bayview area, I went recently uh, to Lions Tooth. Oh yes, and um, they specialize in zines, graphic novels, um, LGBTQ um, literature. So um, uh, and uh, POC literature. So it's like a really um, not. It, it's really community based, and the issues that are kind of working through the community as well. So. Shout out to them as well. Cause... Google's your best friend here. Oh, yes. <laughs> Find, take your city, type mm-hmm. in your city name and mm-hmm. indie bookstores. You will be shocked yeah. by how many there are. Um, also, if you're in the Midwest, there is an entire website Ooh. dedicated to indie books, the Midwest indie bookstores. Oh, really? Yes. That is so cool. And so it lists out all of the indie bookstores in I'm going to get this wrong. <laughs> Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Missouri, and possibly the Dakotas. Okay. Okay. Mm, well, nice. It's a lot of states. Yeah, <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it covers like the entire North Midwest. Oh, awesome. And it is every indie bookstore that has turned their information into the website. Right. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, if you want to be on the list, you got to sign up for the list. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. What? All right, look for that. Check out, yes, a bookstore. Get a book. Google. I got one recently. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> well, and if yeah. you're in the Milwaukee area, mm-hmm. um, the 15th, no, the 17th, it's a Sunday, um, they're doing an Awkward Nerd Book Fair in Milwaukee. Oh, my gosh. Um, their whole premise is this is supposed to be reminiscent of the 90s Scholastic Book Fair. Oh, my oh. gosh. <laughs> but for adults that's oh. awesome that's this sunday <laughs> they're gonna pump the <laughs> yeah, smell yeah, in there this sunday. <laughs> um and they do book readings from the authors um they play like that reminiscent music that really throws you back <laughs> <laughs> nice. um it was i did it last year it was so much fun they're having it again this year and yeah it, it's great fun and it's they have games they have a game vendor they have a i want to say there was one vendor there last year that did nothing but custom bookmarks and like it is so much fun if you are a book lover that is where you need to be oh well awesome so many opportunities for you to get involved with local authors take advantage yes do it do it and we do (laughs) like seeing you even if we look grumpy we're not (laughs) we're just not used to having People looking at our faces for emotion. We are introverts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we want to hear from you. Unless you want to lock us in our basement to have us write, that maybe don't do that. I yeah. mean, talk to me again in a couple months. <laughs> maybe um, I want that. Yeah. After th- this season of running around as a mother, I might be up for a basement vacation. <laughs> i didn't say that there's a nice little pair of shackles yes <laughs> you don't even have listen as as a mom you don't even need to do that i don't have to deal with a child i don't have to do the cooking or the cleaning yeah this sound pretty good take a time know? out yeah <laughs> all righty and uh where can people find you um find little... your books and find you so i do have a website uh animachelleofficial.com I am also on Facebook. I have a Instagram. Mm-hmm. Not the best at posting on it, but I do respond to messages. Um, my books are literally anywhere books are sold online. So nice. I if you have a Nook, you can get the ebooks. I have Nook, Kindle, Kobo, all of the places. Um 
You can also buy physical copies through Barnes & Noble, Amazon. If you want a signed copy, message me on Facebook or even through my website, and I will get that to you. Um, I do many, many, many events. Mm -hmm. um, the big one that I go to every October is Scarefest on Kentucky. Um, so I will be there this year and on my Facebook page, I list all the events I'm going to be at too. Oh, so nice. check those out. Not just for me. There's so many amazing vendors that I work with at all of these events. Oh, so yeah. definitely come check them out if you are in mm -hmm. the areas. Yes, don't be a stranger. And are you at Studio Moonfall as well? Yes. Okay. Donovan always has all yes. of my books. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> One last plug for Donovan. Yes. <laughs> but, um... So that is wonderful. And you can also find us on social media on Facebook at the Art Space Podcast and on Instagram at the Art Space Pod. Uh, we also have a Facebook group, the Marvelous Makers and Art Appreciators. Feel free to join that group. Um, we talk about events that are going on in the community, whether it's a, a music show, an art show, a book event, or anything like that. We, tr we try and um, kind of collectively um showcase those things there so please join in and uh leave us a like a comment review on whatever platform you are listening this to this on whether it be spotify apple podcasts google podcasts stitcher is dead and i'm not gonna say that again but <laughs> um uh yeah in our very own youtube channel so if you want to leave us a comment uh a rating or anything that really helps us out and uh we truly appreciate that oh, yeah. we yeah. want to thank our sponsor joseph from draw joseph thank you we want to thank uh would you kindly for doing our theme song we want to thank you for listening yay and we want to thank anna for being with us today yes i'm glad to be here oh good 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 <laughs> so thanks all around yes thanks everywhere and all around but um I think that about wraps it up for this episode and we will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. Depression, addiction, the thrill that you seek. Our restlessness cages the fire we need. We're here to inspire.